So let me start in the past. Uh, you've said several times, I think, that your relationship with Mrs. Thatcher was misunderstood. What, what did you mean by that? Well, I think probably because I resigned from her government, there was, and survived to rejoin John Major's government, there were those who were her admirers who saw this as part of a conspiracy of me constantly trying to be difficult to Margaret all the way along. Uh, and then after leaving the government, organizing a sort of conspiracy to get rid of her. Mm. Uh, well, that, that, that's just so far from the truth. Um, I never got on particularly well with Margaret. I, I, I didn't like her personally, but, that, <laughs> no, but that's, that's irrelevant because you don't, you're not in politics with, colleague, with many people to like or dislike. I don't like anyone I work with. So well, no, you don't need to. I mean, yeah. it's the difference between friendship and colleagues. But um, so, and Margaret had views of a sort of uh, within the conservative family, which would be significantly different to mine. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a party uh, like the Conservative Party, you have a huge range of views. And uh, you get together because as a vehicle to power, you share enough with the rest of your team uh, to be able to create a coherent government. So my relationship personally with Margaret was perfectly reasonable, although she knew I was much closer to centre than her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose this slightly counters what I'm now going to say. Um, she put me on a list to sack. Uh, when Peter Walker and Paul Channon and myself were featured in The Economist as people just about to go. And um, uh, it so happened that I was, the day of the execution, I was actually scheduled to speak on behalf of the Conservative opposition, um, uh, opposing a major piece of Labour legislation, and uh, then go on to a meeting of hundreds of small business people with the leader of the party, Margaret, so I was very difficult to sack me then. And then the, the next October, I made one of those party conference speeches, which made me very difficult to sack. And, and so we had to work together, and, and uh, we did. Um, and the important point is that when we came to government in 1979, I was at the forefront of uh, one of the most important of the... Um, issues of the time, which is the sale of council houses. And um, I also was absolutely at the forefront of the Thatcherite agenda of controlling public expenditure. I got rid of more quangos than even Keith Joseph. Um, I reduced my department um, from uh, 52,000 to 39,000 without sacking anybody or making anyone redundant in three years, simply by controlling recruitment. And I introduced management, management uh, techniques for running a government department, all of which Margaret liked the look of and was sympathetic towards. Um, uh, and uh, of course, most interestingly, when the riots took place in 81, two years into government, Margaret agreed that I would walk the streets of Liverpool to get to find out what the heck had gone wrong, you know. This was perhaps the most interventionist thing that any government ever did, you know. Um, and then she promoted me. What to wear? Defence. A, because she thought it was out of control financially. Um, and secondly, because the battle for CND, Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, was a major feature in the political horizon. So she, she put me there. And it is uh, on the record that um, uh, she told the then chief whip that she thought that I was her natural successor. So it is, the story is nothing like as simple as um, the, the, the supporters of one side or the other have it believed. Uh, it all went wrong over the, um, the, 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 the fate of the Westland Helicopter Company. Yeah. And that all got tied up with the European issue. And I, I resigned from Cabinet, not 
because of the Westland affair, but because Margaret refused to let me put the case to cabinet. And um, it's a detailed thing, it's an interesting constitution. My right as a cabinet minister is to be heard by my colleagues. She denied me that right, and I said I can't stay within this government. And I always uh, hugely regretted, but never doubted for an instant that I could never have lived with, with myself if I had agreed to be silenced uh, and the cabinet never given a chance to listen to my case.